The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast featuring Jeff Upson and Eric Knopsnyder. PA Power Wrestling. PA Power Wrestling. Pennsylvania is wrestling. Welcome in to the PA Power Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Upson. Join as always. Well, actually, this is, you weren't here last week, so it's not as always. Back in action is Eric Knopsnyder. Yes, actually uh, got a little time to uh, squeeze in a podcast here and pretty excited about it. Best time of year. Well, Eric, I'm hoping you have time to squeeze in too because we're only going to be talking about double A in this episode and we're going to be joined by Cole Matthews from Reynolds, who's always a fun entertaining guy to talk to so i'm sure we're going to have some some good good conversations with cole yeah you could have picked him up as your co-host with uh with me not there he's uh he's been on the show enough at this point i mean you really yeah i mean I, you guys are neck and neck for a number of appearances <laughs> on the show and you're 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 my co-host i thought you, know? you were going to say we were neck and neck in terms of height well no i, I, I mean, think i got a little bit of height you got on a him. few inches on him uh he definitely has more hair than you so he does he does that that's that's uh, a positive so we're gonna break down the double a brackets uh recap a little bit of the the southeast uh, or i'm sorry all the regions that took place over the weekend um the only one that didn't was the southwest that did happen the week prior so uh only three regions to go over but eric first and foremost the brackets have been a mess Yes. Uh, I hope I have the right versions because every time I go to print them out and, you know, so that I can kind of work through it and say who my picks are going to be, I see another tweet saying that they've been updated. Yeah. Yeah. I literally posted three different versions yesterday on PA Power Wrestling. Um, and look, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell you, shoot it straight here. This, this is, it's embarrassing uh, for the sport and for just, it's, it's the fans, the, uh, the wrestlers and the coaches, I think they deserve better than what they're getting. And I understand there was a, an issue with the computer. Or I, I don't know what the issue was, but when you have clearly guys that are missing prestige points, uh, like a guy like Josh Stillings, who was a returning state runner up missing 95 prestige, uh, prestigious points. That would bump him up to the top seed, or even like a Cole Matthews, who we're going to talk to. He was not the top seed to start the brackets. I mean, maybe like if you're not going to, you know, maybe send them to me, and I'll, I'll double check them. I'll, I'll glance them over and just make sure you don't have any glaring mistakes, like like they are now. Yeah, it is. It's been embarrassing for the PIAA. Uh, you know, it's an organization that should have its its finger on the pulse of everything that's going on with this tournament. And when you see this, you're saying, okay, somebody doesn't know what's going on. You know, even if there was a mistake made, you should be able to figure that out before you put these out to the public. And, and it's and it's not like there was one minor mistake. Like for example, Patrick Demark, he what, he was in AAA last year. He was uh, a regional place winner. Um, He's now in double A at Trinity, so I can see maybe a, a oversight. But there was like seven mistakes, um, including some high profile names, like you said, Josh Stillings, Cole Matthews. So, I mean, it's not. I don't. I, I mean, it's not acceptable in my book. And and you know what's going to happen out of this? They're just going to go back to not seeding the tournament. They're yeah, because be like, this well, is this is what they feared the whole time. Is they're yeah. not going to get it right? It, but but here here it is. And I I mean I'm a I'm a cop. My math skills are not good at all. Okay, <laughs> let's let's just get that out there. Right? I mean, I may have a master's degree, but it ain't in mathematics. Okay, let me tell you that. So it's not that hard. And I'm I again, not being a math guy, it's not hard at all to figure out where the points are when you look at prestigious points and you look at the uh, winning percentage. It's it's something that um, you know, and I, I talked with with Mike over at PAWrestling.com dot com yesterday about this and throughout today, and you know this is something that could be done in a matter of minutes, not not hours, um, if you have the the correct records, because you already know where they finished last year. I mean, you see it in our rankings. We next to their name, it says state qualifier. If they were state qualifier, they had to place in the region. If they were a state medalist, you, you it's right there beside their name, and um, you know, I mean, it's just. It's not that hard. It's not rocket science. Well, and that's the thing. None of this had to be done on su Sunday. I mean, these should have been known all year long. 
you know, as you said, we have them on the rankings. We have every place there. I mean, we know wh- where these guys finished last year. It's not going to be a surprise come Sunday. Right. The, the only thing that's changed Sunday is the record. Their season record has increased or decreased. Uh, so at, at one point or another, you're going to add in some wins or losses. So that's the only thing that changes. But you're, that, that's, that's it. I mean, it's not that – again, it's not that difficult. So I'm a little – aggravated by that um and and i hope that you know this isn't the the end of seeding because it's i mean it's a great thing i think this is a really important thing to have the seeds involved in the regional um champions i think that's a a critical component of the 20-man bracket so but if I, i really hope that they're not just like well because we screwed up, we're going to go back to just random draw. So good luck. You guys figure it out. <laughs> then we'll have a Luke Pletcher, Sammy Sasso quarterfinal again. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I hope that's not the case. Uh, I mean, there there was certainly a reason to go to seeding. You know, it's it's 2018. We shouldn't be just saying, okay, let's just put everybody in there. And, you know, we've got a blind draw that uh, Northwest 1 goes here and Southwest 2 goes there. And, you know. Yeah, and, I, you know, Eric, and I tweeted out. I said, please, I will take this mess off your hands for you. I'll do it out of the goodness of my heart because I want to see it done right. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had that offer open for many, many years now, and um, no one's called my phone or, or sent me an email saying, hey, we would like to have you help us out. Um, but maybe, I don't know, maybe that will change. I, I doubt it. Well, you gave him a little hint there, uh, you know, earlier in the uh, uh, the weekend, uh, putting, you know, how you kind of look at how they should be seated, not that they're going right. to be I mean, seated that's, that way. But. And that wasn't based, I mean, obviously, that was only, that wasn't based on everything that they do. They only have two criteria. Uh, I, I looked at three. I looked at head-to-head um, for the season, which they don't look into, which is fine. I get it. And uh, also last year's performance. So, um a little bit of both. Oh, actually, it wasn't just last year's. It was it was the um, their career performances at the state tournament. So, uh, what they do now is if you're a, so, for example, Ryan Vulak from um, Pope John Paul, he was a state medalist, but that was not last year, the year prior, because the PIAA ruled him ineligible. So he can't get those prestigious points added on because he placed at states two years ago, not last year. So that's that's what I I looked at it from all years. Um, for when I put how I thought they should be seated. All right. Uh, I think we've uh, kind of beaten that dead horse now. We, we've we made our points <laughs> abundantly clear on it, and, and hopefully we don't see this going forward. But, uh, yeah, there are brackets now, which we hope are correct, and uh, some pretty exciting stuff in them. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to a lot of these weights here. And, um, you know, let's just go through. We're going to go through region by region, just talk about, uh, again, some of the highlights that I saw and you saw, Eric. Um, As we mentioned, Southwest region already happened. So there's only three regions that happened. Starting off right off the bat in the Southeast region, 106 pounds. Patrick DeMarc, as I mentioned earlier, he was a state qualifier last year when he was at Cumberland Valley. He's now at Trinity. Um, he really started to separate himself from the rest of the field in the major, he, in the finals of the regional tournament, he got a 14, three major, um, against Blake showers, who he beat the week prior, the district three tournament. So, uh, he's really, I mean, he's kind of, uh, a dark horse here. I hate to say that in, in a weight that's, you know, we talk about Gary Steen, Sheldon Seymour, Connor Reitinger, and, and Patrick Mark sort of gets pushed to the side a little bit, but let's not forget he's been to the state tournament before. Um, and he is now the second seed. So he wasn't at first, but because they added on his, uh, his points there, he is now the second seed at 106 pounds. Yeah, this is an interesting one for him. Cause I'll admit, I didn't know too much about him, uh, you know, being mostly a double a guy and a kind of a Southwest, uh, region area guy, uh, didn't know much about DeMarc. Uh, so I looked him up and was surprised. I saw, uh, Baylor Shunk was, uh, was one of his losses this year. But uh, he looks like, as you said, he's really picked it up uh, in the in the postseason here. Yeah, it, it appears to be that so. And I'm not saying you know District Three in the Southeast isn't the deepest weight uh, at 106 pounds, but still, just the the fact that he's uh, racking up 14 points in the regional finals says something. You go up to 120 pounds, two-time state medalist Bronson Garber from Upper Dolphin, a guy who I got to see at District Three a few weeks back. He lost to Colin Nestor in District Three. And then uh, 
came back to take third. And then the regional tournament this past weekend, he finishes fourth. He beat Colin Nestor, so he avenged that loss. But he got he got handled by Josh Jones from Saucon Valley and then actually lost to uh, Isaiah Briner from Newport, which uh, surprised me a little bit. So Bronson Garber, a guy who's been ranked as high as number one in the state um, throughout his career, he's a junior now. So, uh, you know, if he's going to turn it on, now's the time to. Yeah, and you said, you know, not so much depth necessarily at 106, but some some awfully good depth there whenever you've got a guy like uh, Bronson Garber taking fourth in the region. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how, you know, that all matches up, and we'll talk about the bracket and where they fall. But uh, as you said, that's not a guy I want to be seeing first round. No, definitely not. Go up to 132 pounds at the southeast region. I think this is a kind of a loaded weight class. Bodie Tolbert from Bishop McDevitt, who was a state medalist last year, he won it. Um, McGuire, Ryan McGuire, beats Tanner Ball. So Tanner Ball is a, a guy who, again, has been ranked high in the state. He's a, a returning state medalist. Um, so McGuire beats Tanner Ball, and then Tolbert beats him 9-3. So that's a that's a really good win for, for Bodie Tolbert, a guy who, as we said last year, sort of – Came, not came out of nowhere, but he, I, I don't think a lot of people had him finishing top eight in a pretty deep weight. But now all of a sudden you look at, okay, can Bodie, can he make some some noise here at 132 pounds? Yeah, this weight, uh, I know certainly in the southwest region doing the rankings there has just baffled me all year. Uh, so it, it looks like it's not only well, the don't southwest. Even get me started on the it's southwest, hard to pin down, you know, who is the, uh, the guy to pound, beat and, uh, and you know, that, exactly that what's going to go on there. Out of control. There's nothing that makes sense there. So. Um, maybe we're going to stick with that for the rest <laughs> of the, the state here. You go up to 138 pounds, and Bodie Tolbert's uh, teammate, Tyler Martin, he defeats Jason Jones in the finals here. I thought this was a great win for, for Tyler Martin. I think it was a really uh, marquee matchup uh, that he had in the finals there with Jason Jones, who came in ranked number three in the state. This is a guy who has over 150 career wins, so he's he's won a few matches in his career um, and Tyler Martin comes out and beats him 4-1 in the finals at 138 pounds. So that really um, sort of shakes things up a little bit at 138 pounds because Jason Jones is a guy who sort of was was right up there with his guys like Cole Matthews and Kel Dowling. So uh, Martin says not so fast. Is this a, a situation where Bishop McDevitt kind of has it figured out where they're peaking at the right time now? Because, uh, you know, you're, you're getting some guys here that are, are really starting to, to make a, a push here. Is this something that you see continuing uh, this weekend in Hershey? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you look at a guy like Nate Smith and Chase Shields and, um, you know, even Tanner Updegraff. I mean, these these are guys that um, they have, they've been to a lot of tough tournaments before. They've, they've had some tough matches. They were at the, you know, the team state tournament. So they're clearly got some experience on the belt. But I think you're right. It is a, a, something to say about them peaking at the right time. And we see that, that often with different teams across the states so that just all of a sudden they, they turn it on. You know, I look at Burl. Burl's the same way. I mean, they kind of turn it on at the right time. And, uh, yeah, I think McDevitt is, is following suit. Yeah, that uh, they, they definitely have talent there. I mean, you, you've seen it in the past. And if they can, they can put it all together, they're going to be a force. I, I agree with you, Eric, and uh, we'll see how, how that all pans out. And I think a lot of those guys from Bishop McDevitt are looking to finish on the podium, and I think that is certainly a possibility. You look at 145 pounds. This was one, uh, the weight class, that I wanted to see the most because this had the top three ranked guys all in the same region. You had Nathan Halbert from Palisades. You had Colin Myers from Bullion Springs, and you also had Gabe Miller from Peckway Valley. All guys ranked top three in the state. So, you know, from a ranking standpoint, you're saying, okay, well, how they finish here is is a good indication of how they could finish in the state tournament. And they still find a way to baffle you a little bit. Uh, a little bit. I mean, it didn't it didn't go that crazy. I mean, you look at it, Halbert, uh, Nathan Halbert from Palisades, a guy who who came in highly ranked, uh, number one in the state by us. He was a, a fourth place finisher last year, and um, one of you know one of the things I was looking forward to is seeing Colin Myers at 145 pounds. I got to see him at the District Three tournament a few weeks back, and he looked really good, uh, defeating Gabe Miller pretty convincingly. A guy who was third in the state last year. So Colin Myers does fall to to Nathan Halbert. Halbert really that was a, a key win for him to come out from that region as the top top finisher here. So Nathan Halbert does defeat uh, Colin Myers in the finals and um, five two. It was a five two match. 
And then Lucas Christian takes down Gabe Miller for third. So Gabe Miller, a guy who bounced around from 38 to 45. Same with Colin Myers. Colin Myers has been down at 38, but um, 45 was a little bit more wide open. So I think that was a decision to, to come up. All right, uh, moving up uh, to, to 170, you've got Edmund Ruth uh, there taking on Dalton Group in, in another high-profile matchup. Yeah, this happened. This is the second week in a row. These two wrestled Ed Ruth or Edmund. I'm sorry, Ed Ruth. I always, I feel like I say that every single podcast. I always you do. say you do. Ed, Ed Ruth. It's just hard not to. I mean, That's why I took that one from you. I made sure I said Edmund to kind of lead you into it, but, you know. It just still didn't work. You can, <laughs> you can lead a horse to water. Right, Eric? That's right. Uh, so Edmund Ruth of Susquehanna Township, he defeats Dalton Group for the second week in a row. This was a great match in the District 3 tournament. It looks like it was probably the same uh, sort of match at the uh, Southeast Regional Tournament here. But Ed Ruth does defeat Dalton Group, uh, who is a returning state runner-up. Uh, Edmund Ruth, obviously, a returning state champion. And, boy, it's going to be tough for even, even uh, Robert Patrick. I mean, these guys, we're talking about high-quality guys here. Um, behind Edmund Ruth. Yeah, and that's the, the, the big thing there is now Group and Patrick are on the same side. You know, Ruth has, not saying he has an easy path to the finals, but obviously an easier one where Group and, and Patrick could, could end up meeting in the semis just for the right to face him in the final. Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree with you. I mean, if you're going to be separated from someone, it's probably going to be you know Edmund Ruth that you want to be away from. But 170 is very, very deep, uh, especially with those three guys leading the the charge here. Moving up to 220 pounds, uh, Austin Taylor from Boylan Springs came in number eight in state. He pins Nasir Pettis from District 12 in the finals, who came in number six at 220 pounds. So a weight that I think is a little bit more more wide open outside of the top uh, top few there. So uh, Austin Taylor sort, definitely making a impact at the regional tournament. Yeah, good win there. Uh, sets him up, uh, you know, kind of nicely. Puts him at what would essentially be the the four seed in the bracket. So, uh, you know, big win there for him. Let's go ahead over to the Northeast Regional, and it started off right at the bat from 106 pounds. A guy who was ranked as high as number one in the state as a returning state medalist, Jacob Blair, for months he missed weight on the first day, not the second day. The first day he missed weight, um, so he he was out right away. Yeah, that's. Uh... I mean, you know, not to criticize anyone, but you wonder how that happens, especially on the first day, as you said. You know, you can kind of see sometimes the second day you, you put on some weight during the day. You maybe only get a match or two in, you know, not a lot of a calories burned. But how you, you miss it on the first day is uh, is kind of baffling. I mean, when you have all week to prepare to get your weight under control, as, as you said, it's, it's hard to understand how that, that happens. Um, but that, that sort of opens up things. I mean, um, Blair is a guy who, who's really highly ranked, um, at the, at one time this year, he took some losses, um, throughout the season and, uh, in the team postseason. So, uh, definitely a guy who would have made an impact here, but he is no longer there. You look at 126 pounds, a guy from, from Valley view, Brandon judge, who came in number 23 in the state. He takes out returning state medalist, Jeremy Hanford from warrior run in the uh, semifinal seven, two. So I thought that was a, a good win for, for judge. And then 132 pounds, Cole Roan from Benton defeats his old teammate, who's now at Muncie, Joe Clock. He beats him 5 nothing. These two have been back to back and back, and they're probably going to see each other again, I would say. And I think uh, I saw a tweet. I think this was, was right at the end that, uh, that Roan scored to win this. I'm, I'm not 100% on that, but I believe that's what it was, that he got five late uh, to win it. Yeah, according to Mitch Rupert, uh, who does a lot of uh, good things up there in District 4, he said that uh, Roan hit a, a five-pointer near the end of the match to, to win that. And uh, if, if you remember the week prior at the District 4 tournament, Joe Clock hit a big fiver to go I think he won 10-5 that match so like some crazy results here between these two and you know can you imagine wrestling your former teammate that you wrestled with for three years in the room and then letting it all hang out sort of in for three or four weeks in a row well that's what I was going to say especially what you're saying if you end up uh, they end up hitting in the district regional and state finals I mean that's (laughs) takes those uh, those practice sessions for all those years into a, a new level 
Yeah, I, I definitely am looking forward to to seeing that match happen. And Cole Rohn's a guy who we saw down at 26 earlier this year. Um, he was a, a state runner up last year. He moves up to 132 pounds because it is a little bit more uh, open, especially without a guy by the name of Gavin Teasdale not being there. So um, 32 seemed to be the better fit for him. So Roan and Clock, yeah, I think it could happen again. But we'll talk about that a little bit more when we break down the bracket. And moving up to 160 pounds, a big win for sophomore Tyler Stoltzfus from Mifflinburg. He comes away with a, a major decision, a 10-2 win over the returning undefeated state champion, Corey Edsel of Y Lucing. That was huge. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes you don't want to put too much stock in, in how big of a victory a guy wins by, how many points. But 10-2 over a returning state champ and, uh, and, and a guy who was undefeated this season, that's pretty impressive. And moving up to the northwest part of the state here, Eric, and there was a lot of surprises uh, when I went through the brackets and was looking at how uh, things were progressing up in the northwest and several guys that were not going to see the state tournament that I thought for sure we would see there. Yeah, and a rough weekend for Brookville, which has, you know, traditionally been uh, been so good. Uh, just some some strange results here. At 113 pounds, Hunter Thompson from Ticeville came in ranked number ninth in the state. He had the injury default out, so he's not going to be competing at Hershey. Um, Will Burgess from Union City, a guy who was a state qualifier last year, gets beat by unranked wrestler Dylan Pesach, uh, so that was a big win for him. 126 pounds, Ty Varndell of Cambridge Springs. He avenges a loss to Kenny Kaiser, uh, beating him 5-1 in the finals. They faced uh, off last week, the week prior, too. And Varndell is one of those guys where he, the, the PIAA forgot to give him his, his prestige points uh, because he, he finished uh, in the regional. He placed at the regional last year, and he, he didn't get his points. So he, he got moved around the bracket a little bit, which was significant because he got on the other side of Gavin Teasdale. Yeah, that's always big whenever you can get in the bottom half there. 145 pounds. Caleb Hedrick defeats Hunter Michaels in the finals. It was 6-5. Uh, I've heard some rumblings from across social media that there was a con- there were some controversial calls here in this, this match, um, and I'll be interested to see what uh, what Cole Matthews has to say about this. But Caleb Hedrick from Brookville, returning state medals, defeats Hunter Michaels from Reynolds. Um, and Logan McLean avenges a loss to to Mike uh, Doerfingler, and he places third. So 145 is a stacked weight in the Northwest and, and really the state overall. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, two really good ones there in the finals, as you said, with Hedrick and Michaels in, in what sounded like a heck of a match. And you look at one of those first guys from Brookville that's not going to be at the state tournament, that's Xavier Molnar from Brookville. He was a state medalist last year. He does not finish in the top four. Um, and which is, which is insane because 195 was so loaded at this weight class. You had five wrestlers at 195 pounds in the North Northwest region, all ranked in the top seven. Like that, that's, that is the, the, one of the deepest regions weights I've seen this year. Yeah. And I mean, all these guys could place because the rest of the state, uh, aside from Hoffman, isn't that deep. You'll see another one of these guys at 220 from Brookville. Yeah, Tyler Cook from Brookville, a guy who was a state qualifier as a sophomore. He was seventh in the state as a junior. Uh, he will not be going to the state tournament this year. He lost to Cleo Messiah, and then he lost to Tom Wooster uh, from Clarion, and he he misses he misses a trip to to Hershey, which was definitely uncharacteristic for Tyler Cook, especially a guy who was ranked very high in the state all throughout the year. I mean, obviously being a returning state medalist at 220 pounds, uh, we saw him battle Dom DeLuca from Derry at the power tournament and ultimate tiebreaker. So he's, he's more than capable. He just, I mean, it's so important to wrestle those regions tough and you can't take anyone for granted. I mean, those guys obviously came out to, to battle. Yeah. Another deep weight class there. And, you know, it just shows you, you have to, to, to be wary every match and, and, and be into it because uh, you get a region like that where you get a, a couple deep weight classes and there are no guarantees. Yeah, and uh, both those guys had tremendous careers for for Brookville. They've they helped them to to a state team tournament title a few years back, and um, you know there's nothing to be ashamed of for for their performances. So that's the wrap up from the regional tournaments that I saw. Some of the things that stuck out to me. So now that we have what we think are official brackets, I mean they're like official 
uh, version 4.0. Seems like 87 percent sure. That I'm about, these are I'm about 83. I'm about an 83 percent right now <laughs> that these are these are correct. In fact, the ones I have in front of me, I know are for sure not correct. But I already filled them out and highlighted matches that I I wanted, so I can't <laughs> I can't go back on that. But I just well, I waited until just before the podcast to print these out. Because I saw they, they updated them again at, I don't know what it was, one thirty. Yeah, so I, I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know the changes that were made. Um, so I'm going to kind of wing it there. But, um, yeah, 106 was one of those that had a change. Because, uh, as we mentioned, Patrick DeMarc from Trinity, he is now the second seed as opposed to Connor Redinger from Quaker Valley, the freshman here. So let's let's talk about 106 pounds here, Eric. And really, I love this weight class. And I, I normally don't get too excited about 106 pounds, but this is a weight class that has so much, uh, you know, depth, but it's they have different types of depth. I mean, you have Sheldon Seymour, who's a sophomore. He's extremely undersized last year, comes back this year, and he has one loss on the season. But then you have some freshman studs like Connor Reitinger and Gary Steen, this is going to be a really fun weight class to watch. It is. And and for me, the first round matchup is the guy that you keep talking about, Patrick DeMarc. Because he, even though he got the second seed, he's not going to have an easy task there with Ryan Michaels from Elizabeth Forward, who uh, you know impressed me with uh, with his performance in the Whippeals. Yeah, Eric, and that's one of the, the matchups that I, I foresee happening, and it really could be a, a good match there. Ryan Michaels is a guy who I think impressed uh, you and myself especially the last few weeks here, uh, especially at the regional tournament. So what are you looking else, uh, some other first-round matches? I, I've got some highlight here that I'm really looking forward to. I, I want to hear what you have. Well, I think there are a lot of interesting ones here. Uh, you know, Gary Steen is a guy who's just been so impressive from Reynolds, but he could end up with a, a tough one there too. Uh, Baylor Shunk and Blake Wirt are going to wrestle in a, a preliminary round match, and and Shunk was a state place winner last year. Gary Steen would most likely have the winner of Blake Wirt and, and Baylor Shunk. Um, Baylor Shunk, as you said, returning state medal, so that that's a really tough match. One of the ones I have circled here is Bailey Gimber and Joey Fisher. Both are freshmen. Both are wrestling really, really hard uh, throughout the season. Bailey Gimber um, from Bernie Ryan Heights and Joey Fisher from South Park. Fisher just he, he couldn't get past Redinger uh, in in the last few weeks, but he's he's super tough. Gimber the same way. I got to see him at District Three. Uh, I like the way he's wrestling, and and I think those two are going to to have a really good match. Yeah, I think the top half of this is really the the tougher bracket. Uh, whenever you've got Seymour, you've got Fisher, you've got Eamon All, who beat Fisher earlier in the season, and then you've got Steen as well, plus Shunk. I mean, that's a loaded top half of the bracket. I, I agree with you 100%, Eric. The top half is, is scary good. Uh, you look at it, you said Ole uh, from St. Joe's Academy, who only has two losses on the season, one of them being in the regional tournament. Um, but Gary Steen, 41-4 uh, and four on the season. I'm very impressed with the way he was wrestled. I, I got to see him on multiple occasions this year, and he, he looks like he's improving throughout. So, um, But Sheldon Seymour, I mean, you can't sleep on uh, on Seymour. I mean, he was he was very undersized last year, and he still battled. I mean, he was 20 pounds underweight last year, maybe not 20 pounds, but he was very much undersized, and uh, he battled. So, I mean, now a little bit bigger as a sophomore, is he able to to get over that hump and um, certainly I think he's a favorite to get on the medal stand. Yeah, I, I agree with you, though. This is a really fun weight class. A uh, lot of interesting matchups coming in in this one. And you look at Redinger uh, from Quaker Valley, who's just really just been consistent throughout the, the season and especially through the, the latter part of the season. Redinger and him and Seymour, I'd love to see them wrestle in the, the state finals just because they're so contrasting uh, styles. I, I believe... Uh, Redinger is a lot taller than Seymour. Seymour is a little bit shorter. Um, Redinger is a little bit more taller and lankier. Um, but he he's going to have his hands full in the bottom half as well. I know it may not be as deep, but you have Gable Strickland from Benton, uh, Chase McLaughlin from, from Jamestown, who's been wrestling tough, and Patrick DeMarc, as we mentioned, from Trinity, um, sort of under the radar a little bit out in District 3. So, uh, yeah, 106, definitely going to be a fun one. Moving up to 113 pounds, you got returning state champion Bo Bayless leading the charge there. And uh, last year, Cole Matthews called it before the tournament. Um, he said, I'm sitting here with 2017 state champ Bo Bayless. This was before he was in Hershey. And uh, he was right. Bo Bayless did come out and win a state title. You know, Eric, this is like deja vu because we got the same wrestlers basically from last year at 106 pounds, now up at 113. 
you do, uh, you uh, you kind of swap out uh, Caden Cassidy for Brock McMillan in, in District 6, but uh, a lot of the same names there. And when you look at this bracket, I mean, you got the, the two returning guys that finished in the top two last year, 106 pounds. You got Josh Boozle from Mountain Union, who's the second seed. He was a runner-up, state runner-up last year to Bo Bayless, um, who comes in as the top seed. But you look at a guy, like you said, Brock McMillan, two freshmen are going to go at it with McMillan and Edmondson from Southern Columbia. Um, so I think that's going to be a good first-round match. But don't sleep on Wyatt Lutz from Montoursville. This is a senior uh, multiple time medalist. He was third last year in this weight. Um, and I think he sort of lingers there and I think he could, could cause some issues, uh, down the road. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see Wyatt Lutz in the finals. Uh, uh, you know, you it, potentially a, a Boozle Lutz match up there in the semis. And yeah, that, that wouldn't stun me to, uh, to see Lutz make the finals there. Another guy that's sort of intriguing to me is John Consorti of Wilson, a guy who was a state medalist a few years back. He didn't wrestle last year. I believe he only had a few matches under his belt, I, um, He was, so he's not in the lineup. But I think he kind of is, is a guy who uh, I think has the obviously the experience and the level to, to be someone who's, who's high up on the podium. But um, I'm not sure quite where he would finish. Dolan Gimber from uh, Brandywine Heights, I think he's sort of been wrestling tough as well. And, uh, yeah, I think Nate Smith from Bish McDevitt, you kind of look at those Bish McDevitt guys that we talked about. Can he can he really make some noise? We saw him and Bo Bayless wrestle at the team state tournament with Bayless winning that one. But uh, can Nate Smith turn the tables? Yeah, he's, uh, he's one that's definitely going to be a factor there in the top half. And, uh Stepping back for a minute to a matchup that you mentioned earlier, that uh, Brock McMillan, uh, Patrick Edmondson one, is intriguing to me because they're kind of two different situations as far as their their teams go and where they're at right now. You know, Southern Columbia wrestles a really difficult schedule, uh, was was such a factor in the the team race uh, this year. And then you got Brock McMillan, who, as his coach told me, pretty much as soon as he set foot on the mat this year as a freshman, was the most accomplished wrestler in Glendale history. So, you know, it's a guy, McMillan certainly isn't, isn't unfamiliar with the big stage. You know, he's, he's won PJW titles. He's been to Fargo. He's done all that. But there's still something different whenever you step out into to the Giant Center for the first time versus a guy like Edmondson, who's a freshman but has already been there for the team states, has kind of been through some of these big tournaments this season already. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's going to be uh, interesting to see how he adjusts to that and, um, we look at a guy like Josh Boozle as well. I mean, he's just had Brock McMillan's number these last few weeks. So um, you got to like the way Josh is sitting on the bottom half there. I do. I do. But uh, again, I, I would probably take Lutz. Uh, I think I'd go with the upset there. All right. Well, after we're done recapping the brackets, we are going to give picks. Um, so you, you're going to have to hold tight for where we think some people are finishing. We're going to talk about the top three guys in each weight that we think are going to finish. So um, let's move up to 120 pounds. Again, a lot of similarities here from a year prior. Jarrett Lane from Southern Columbia, uh, that powerhouse program that you mentioned, Eric, he comes in as the top seed, and the guy he beat in the finals last year is Chase Shields from Bish McDevitt. He is your second seed. So could we see another Shields-Lane matchup in the finals? Yeah, that's certainly a possibility there. Uh, as far as first-round matchups that are intriguing, I look at that uh, Richie Markulix, uh andrew Ishko uh, match in the first round and, and think that could be pretty entertaining. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, uh, Ishko is a guy who is a returning state medalist, and you know he has 10 losses on his season, but those are 10 losses on a Reynolds schedule, so that, that means something. Um, I think you look at Ryan uh, Burstler from Middletown, him going against Brian Daubert from Forest Hills in a first-round matchup. I think that's a, a good matchup. Marquise Branford from Wilson, a uh, guy we saw on Fargo this year, impressed me. He's only had 20 matches on the year, but uh, can he kind of make some noise up on that, that top half of the bracket? You look at Zach Whitmer from St. Joe's. Eric, what, what, what to make of, of Zach Whitmer here? Well, I mean, he just got off to such a fantastic start. Uh, and then it was actually Brian, Byron Dobbert uh, that you mentioned, who's in a first-round match, that upset him uh, in the District 6 uh, tournament. But, man, Whitmer has been so solid aside from that. Uh, it, that Again, that top half, 
being the top seed isn't necessarily uh, it guaranteeing you an easy path to the finals, even though Jarrett Lane is so good. I mean, you've got Dobbert, who's already knocked off a guy like uh, Whitmer. You've got Marquise Brantford. You've got Mark Kulix and, uh, and Ishko and, and Whitmer uh, all in that, that top half of the bracket. So definitely some intrigue coming out there, uh, you know, as, as to, to what's going to happen there. I mean, you look at just the, the rankings, um, last week's rankings going into the regional tournament, and all those guys you mentioned are ranked top 10 in the state. Uh, Marquise Branford was nine. You had Ishko six. Um, Mark Euclid's, uh fourth. So Jarrett Lane won. So, yeah, I, I agree with you, Eric. That, that top half is, is pretty loaded. On the bottom half, you can't sleep on Isaac Crow from Fort LaBeouf. He was a state medalist last year. Um, he's currently ranked number two in the state. And um, I think he sort of has a, a good path there on the bottom half. But you have a guy like Derek Christie from Westmont, who was a returning state medalist, and Chase Shields, who's just been super consistent as well throughout the season. I, I could see a, a Ty Zimmerman uh, from Derry and Chase Shields quarterfinal. I could see that being pretty interesting. Yeah, Zimmerman's really been impressive as a freshman this season. And I agree with you. Uh, that that certainly wouldn't be a, a, a gimme for uh, Chase Shields. No, not at all. I, I agree with you there. And um, I like this weight class as well. I mean, Jared Lane's obviously the favorite, but uh, you got to like the, the competition level of some of these other guys coming into 120 pounds. You go up to 126 pounds, and here we are with the possibility of have just yet another four-time Pennsylvania State champion, Gavin Teasdale, but it's not a his, it's not sort of a, a typical Gavin Teasdale story here because he comes in with two losses, and that's two more than he's ever came in with. He does two losses and some some difficult matches too. Uh, even the wins haven't been those dominant, you know, two and a half minute tech falls that we've seen from him in the past. I mean, there have been some tight matches for him. Yeah, there, there certainly has, and I, I don't think necessarily there's going to be. I'm not saying Gavin's going to get knocked off here at 126 pounds, but I think it's sort of, you know, I mean, it's it's hard to to wrestle that that good for four years. And, you know, I, I'm not saying this is the case, but you look at burnout, you look at, um, you know, overtraining. I don't know. You look at different factors. I mean, maybe you're not doing right the right things off the mat. Maybe you're uh, taking things for granted. I don't know what it is, but clearly it's a different year for Gavin. Um, you look at 126 pounds here, and I, I think that it's, uh, you know, it's really anyone's, uh, again, out, outside of Gavin, it's sort of anybody's shot here. You have A.J. Burkhart from Athens, uh, Josh Jones from Saucon Valley. Uh, I think there's a lot of depth here uh, outside of, of Teasdale. You also have Ty Verndell from Cambridge Springs. So uh, what do you think? What do you make of this? Well, how about that first round matchup of uh or potential first round matchup? You you assume it's gonna happen. Bronson Garber and Ty Varndell. That's a huge that's a huge matchup. I mean, you look at <laughs> a guy like Bronson Garber who's a re- two time returning state medalist and you know, um yeah, that that's sort of that's unfortunate for Ty Varndell, but I'd rather still be there than on the same side as Gavin Teasdale as you look at you can possibly make the finals. But, yeah, that's not an easy route to the finals because, you, like you said, you're most likely going to have Bronson Garber. You win that match, and you're going to get the winner between Jeremy Hanford and Sean Broadway. And Hanford was a returning state medalist. Broadway is a guy who has wrestled Teasdale in the last two weeks, and he's kept it to a uh, decision at one of those. So that's Yeah, and I, I I don't know. I didn't get to see the, the regional match, but I heard that, that he had uh, Teasdale on his back, it looked like. So, uh, you know, Broadway's certainly a guy that uh, that can go with anyone. Yeah, I think that bottom half is, is pretty stacked, in my opinion. You got, as you said, Varndell, Garber, Hanford, uh, Broadway. You have Brandon Judge here, who I thought had a good regional tournament. And Josh Jones from Saucon Valley, a guy um, who we liked in this year. He's ranked second in the state, and he was a fifth-place finisher last year. Um, so we've been high on him all year. And then you got some other guys like Gort Cornell from Everett, sort of under the radar, and uh, ZJ Ward from Freedom, a guy who's been to the state tournament before. Uh, can he Can he make some noise down here in the bottom half? Yeah, Cornell and Ward have actually gone back and forth this season. Uh, uh, quite a few matches between them, and uh, and they're both really quality guys. I mean, uh, you know, kind of on the same same level. And I, I think Jones and and for me, I think it would probably be Jones and Broadway, uh, the the favorites here. But man, it's it's 
so many tough matchups in there. Yeah, they're, they're, it's just hard to hard to judge and hard to say, you know, especially looking at the, the the bottom half of the bracket. And it doesn't get any easier up at 132 pounds because you got Cole Roan from Benton, who's the top seed. He was a state runner-up last year to Gavin Teasdale. And Bodie Tolbert from Bish McDevitt, returned state medalist. He is the second seed. Sam Sallett of Harbor Creek is your uh, third seed. And Alex Miskovich of Mount Pleasant is your fourth seed. So, Wow. Look at this bracket. Look at the potential first round matchups and first round matchups. I have a lot of matches highlighted here. The one I'm going to mention right off the bat, Eric, and I'm have a feeling you have this one highlighted too. Joe clock and Jacob powers. This at one time was a one in a two match that they, these at one time were ranked number one and number two in the state. That's, that's going to be a first round match. That's a guaranteed first round match. Yeah, that, <laughs> and that's a guaranteed watch one. You gotta you gotta have your eyes on on bout ninety four whenever you get to her. Yeah, that's that's a that's must see wrestling right there. Uh, Jacob Power is a guy from uh, St. Joe's Academy out in Bullsburg. Joe Clock, who has a win over Cole Roan, um, kind of a guy that he's been number one in the state throughout the season. Can he really set himself apart here from the rest? If he, I mean, this is why you look at winning the region and it's so critical here because you look at it and the bottom half is much more loaded, in my opinion, than top half. Yeah, I agree. And you're right. Uh, uh, Joe Clock goes from, from potentially being that top seed to then, hey, you get Jacob Powers in the first round. Although I'll tell you what, I think Cole Roan uh, has a potential first interesting first round matchup too. He potentially has AJ Corrado from Burrell, who we've seen play kind of a giant killer this year already. No, he uh, has 30, he 35 did. and thirteen records. So you know, there's certainly some losses there, but he's he's shown the ability to when he's on, kind of go with the top guys in the state. No, I I agree. I think he's he's obviously a problem for anybody who he steps on the mat with. Um, and you're right, it doesn't get much easier in the top half. Tanner Ball from Peckway Valley, return state mouse. Rocco Bartolo from Reynolds, a guy who's impressed me throughout the year. Ryan McGuire from, from Notre Dame Green Pond, another guy who's a return state medalist. He's up there in the top half. Um, yeah, it, it's – and then, of course, Al Miskovich from Mount Pleasant. You know, he sort of <laughs> came out of nowhere to win this 132-pound weight class that – uh, literally no one in the world could figure out how this was going to pan yeah. out because someone was winning it different every week. I mean, this is that, that Southwest region was just crazy because yeah, you had Trent Schulteis from uh, freedom Donovan chambers from Elwood city stepped up in the region and took second. I mean, it was just every week it was okay. Who's going to, who's going to beat who this week? I mean, no one was safe. No one was safe in that, in that weight class. I mean, you look at John Rocco Gonzalez, who's not in Hershey, um, so yeah. Yeah. And he was ranked first in the, in the state. Yeah. We, point, those he? guys who rank them must be, man, they're, they're clueless. <laughs> those, those double A state rankers here. So no, I, I agree with you. 32 is kind of wide open. I mean, you look at, yes, Cole Roan and Joe clock are, are sort of a favorite here, but Sam Sallett, not a guy you want to sleep on. Miskovich, clearly not a guy you want to look past. And the list goes on and on. I mean, as you said, so many returning state medalists and, and state qualifiers here that it's really tough to, to judge and say who's going to come out on top. But uh, definitely a good good problem to have for fans. Yeah, yeah, some great matchups there. Uh, moving up to, to 138, what do you see here as a, a great first-round matchup? Well, I mean, first off, uh, let's talk about Cole Matthews, the fact that, that he was not the top seed when the brackets first came out because, um, I mean, whoever has heard of Cole Matthews, that doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, Cole Matthews is now the top seed on the corrected brackets, um, which we are 87 and 83% sure are the correct brackets. Um, you look at 138 pounds, Eric, and there's several uh, first-round matchups that I'm looking forward to. Charlie Beatty from Marion Center going against Luke O'Connor from Wyatt Lucing, two guys that I, I, I've been high on for their careers. They've both been wrestling really tough throughout their, their careers at respective schools. That's a, a good first-round matchup. Uh, but also Jason Jones and Brock Salvatore from Sharpsville. Jason Jones, who uh, we mentioned, got upset by Tyler Martin. He's uh, over 150 career wins on, under his belt out of Saucon, and he's going to have a tough match with Brock Salvatore. 
Yeah, I think there are quite a few interesting ones here. I have my eye on that uh, Noah Stam Braden Swab one. Yeah, that's a good uh, one too. Swab's a Swab's a guy that's flown under the radar a little bit. Uh, you know, not uh, Central hasn't had the the best season, so he hasn't been uh, you know kind of front and center. But uh, I think last week's rankings had him at number eight and Stam at number six. So uh, pretty good first round matchup there. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, really, the Northwest region here is is pretty deep with uh, with Cole Matthews, uh, Lucas McLean, who was a a state qualifier last year, um, and as and Dante Constable as well, who was a state qualifier last year. Just a lot of depth here um, throughout. But you got to like Cole Matthews and his chance here. Uh, the second seed is Caleb Dowling from St. Joe's. Your your area of coverage uh, and. and you know, I wonder if Cole knows Caleb Dowling because we asked him last year if he knew Thane Lawrence. And he's like, nope, never heard of him. Uh, do you think he's heard of Caleb Dowling? I, Cole's in his own world. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, thought. that's true. Do they have Do they have uh, like TVs up there in Reynolds? I will have to ask Mason. Yeah, figure yeah, out. We'll get on that. We'll, we'll get we'll get on that. So, um, what else are you looking at? Matt Milbrand from Bloomsburg. He's up there. Um, you got Tyler. I like Barnum that Tristan Bishop. Pugh matchup with him in the first round too. Uh, Pugh has been a guy that uh, you know he's kind of hard to figure as well. At times, he looks like he's really ready to take that next step, and then you know uh, he he lost twice uh, pretty badly to Swab at regionals. So I'm not quite sure sure what to expect out of him there. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of uncertain as to you look at the top half. I'm uncertain who I obviously think Cole Matthews is going to make the semis, but I'm looking there and. I really don't know who to expect to be his opponent. I mean, I really think there's three or four guys that could be there. Charlie Beatty, um, Dante Constable, Tyler Martin, I think, are guys. Well, yeah, that- how about that for a first-round matchup? You know, you talked about Tyler Martin being a guy that really impressed uh, last week, and now his reward is, is Dante Constable in the first round. Yeah, sure, sure. And, uh, you know, Matt Milbrand could potentially have Tristan Pugh from Berlin. Um yeah, I mean Caleb Dowling. Easily, you look at that and you say, well, you could, he could potentially have to go through Jason Jones, and then uh, Lucas McLean or Matt Milbrand to get to the finals. Uh, I, I do, I do think thirty-eight outside of Cole Matthews is going to be fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, definitely some some interesting matchups there. And joining us to talk about 138 pounds is the top seed, the newly top seed. He he wasn't at one time, but he is now. And that's Cole Matthews of Reynolds. Cole, thanks for joining us on the show. Yes, thank you for having me. This is our second year in a row having Cole Matthews on the show. I just thought it was too entertaining last year to not have you back here again in 2018. Uh, So I'm hoping for a familiar and similar ride again this year uh, as we bring you on the podcast. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I try to make it entertaining for everybody. <laughs> uh, well, you you do a good job, Cole, and I think Eric would agree with me. Um, and we start to look at the the state brackets now. Uh, the PIAA, I believe, has them to the point where they are correct. And you look at 138 pounds. Obviously, you're coming in as a favorite. Talk about the uh, the state tournament. What you're looking forward to in your final journey. Um, I'm looking forward to having a good time with the team and the coaches for our. Uh, last adventure with me but besides like myself i think i have a pretty good bracket i don't usually look at brackets but i looked at it and i think i could uh put up a lot of points anyway and get to the finals and i've seen that uh doubt that dialing kid's tough so i'll have to look into him a little bit but our team uh bracket wise for everybody else has some good draws Cole, you said you don't normally look at the brackets. Did you look at it when it first came out? And I mean, it's changed so many times. But uh, you know, I kind of looked at it. I'm like, wait, Cole Matthews isn't the top seed? Did you did you see that one? <laughs> no, I seen it like when it first came out. So I don't know what the updated ones are. I guess. You, no, no, you, you, are, you are, yeah. Initially, yeah, didn't have you as the top seed. I think. Yeah, it's probably because of two losses. <laughs> Well, Cole, I, th- I think maybe it was an error on the the PIAA's uh, side, but you were you are now the the top seed at 138 pounds. I know last year when we talked to you, uh, we had mentioned a guy by the name of Thane Lawrence, and you're like, I don't know who he is. And now you got <laughs> yeah. you, now you got a, a, another guy, Caleb Dallin. You do know who he is. Um, pretty pretty yeah. decent wrestler. Um, thoughts mm-hmm. on that bracket overall? Like you said, you think you got a pretty pretty good bracket? Yeah, I mean. I do know who Thane Lawrence is now. He's a tough <laughs> dude, so I give him credit. I wrestled him at Flow. He's a tough dude. Um, 
But Dowling, I don't, I don't know how he wrestles or anything like that. But uh, I think the other side of the bracket is going to be pretty interesting because even in uh, my region, there's some tough fighters in there like Constable McLean and Salvatore who uh, they could beat anybody on any given day. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess my bracket's looking pretty good for me though. You've uh, that, that's that's got to be a little bit of a change of pace for you. I mean, the past two years you probably had uh, arguably two of the toughest brackets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, huh, I don't think anything's going to compare to my sophomore year with all them tough dudes. But um, yeah, this year, like, I'm not really looking out to find one particular person to study on. I'm just going to figure out how uh, I'm going to wrestle and the pace I'm going to keep and. Hopefully people are studying me. And Cole, when you talk about your sophomore year, obviously last year with Max Murin, um, this year as a senior, mm-hmm. you won it your freshman year. You know, how special would that mm-hmm. be for you to end your career the way it started and that's on top of the podium? Um, it would be a, a special moment for me uh, in front of all the Reynolds fans because I know they've been wanting me back on the podium every year, but or uh, at the top of the podium every year, but... Um, it's just going to be a, a sad weekend after it's all over. No, it'll be the last one. Has it sunk in yet that this is the last time you're going to Hershey? I mean, at the many times you've been there as a spectator, then mm-hmm. as, you know, as your team, your team's always there. All four years you've been there, your team's been there. Um, and now you're, it's your last hurrah as an individual. Has it, has it sunk in that this is it? Um, only a little bit, but I think it'll sink in a little bit more after, uh, like all the wrestling practices are done and, um, you see like the other kids start coming through the program next year. It'll sink in that how special, uh, our program is and all the good times we have together. Talk about the team aspect and uh, and how you think you guys can do up there. Uh, you know, obviously a, a loaded lineup. What are your expectations as far as your teammates go? Um, my expectations for all of them is uh, for everybody to get on the podium for sure. There's going to be some, like our uh, 126 pounder, Caden Berger, he is a brawler. He'll uh, go toe-to-toe with anybody. So if we could get him on the podium, that'd be a crazy weekend for us. But I think we can put up a lot of team points anyway, too, and I think we could blow everybody out. And last year, you you called Bo Bayless. You said, I remember you said uh, before the tournament, you said, I'm sitting here with 2017 state champ Bo Bayless. And he did go on and win <laughs> a state championship, so you didn't jinx him. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. What, what about this year? Mm-hmm. I mean, you got some favorites. I mean, obviously you, uh, Bo, but then Gary Steen, a, a young freshman at 106 mm-hmm. pounds, kind of a wide open bracket. You know, how many guys mm-hmm. do you see on, on top of the podium? Um. I hope everybody, that's for sure. But uh, um, uh, Bo and Gary, those two are crazy workout partners with each other, uh, including Andrew Rishko and Caden, like I said. But those guys are just making each other better every day. That's why you can see the results coming the way they are. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Bo and Gary at the top of the podium because they definitely earned it. And looking forward to the, the state tournament, um, but also looking forward to your future, the Pitt Panthers, you'll be staying somewhat close to home and, and head, uh, heading to Pittsburgh for the uh, foreseeable future. What's what's the feeling like for you? I mean, knowing that that's so close for you and, um, you know, have you talked about the, the classic, the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic and having possibly the opportunity to wrestle in the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse where, where you'll be spending some time? Yeah, I think it'd be an honor to get selected for it but for now i'm just gonna focus on what i got coming up this weekend but after that i'll uh be focused on the dapper dan hopefully they do uh decide to pick me and i can wrestle uh bravo young that'd be a pretty fun matchup for me (laughs) penn state uh, action there what was that a little pit penn state preview there (laughs) oh yeah Hopefully we get a bunch of them. I think there'll be some points scored in that match. I don't know. I'm going on a limb here. 
That's what makes the sport fun. Uh, absolutely, Cole. And your, your style is just mm-hmm. sort of one of those styles that translates into a lot of points, a lot of different ways. And um, do you sort of thrive on mm-hmm. that, Cole? Just, you know, like you said, you're you're entertaining off the mat. We know that. That's been established. But on the mat, you're just <laughs> as entertaining. You know, is that something you thrive on is scoring a lot of points and just having fun out there? I mean, you really do look like you're just – you're flowing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it starts with having a good gas tank. I mean, if you don't have a gas tank, it's not as fun, and I've experienced that. But when you have a gas tank and the practices that we uh, go through all year, it makes it a whole lot funner whenever you can start putting points up and whooping on some kids. <laughs> Well, Cole, we, we certainly look forward to seeing you uh, in action in Hershey, um, you know, just talking about your future. And, and it's hard to believe that this is it's coming to an end for you. And, you know, the, yeah. fu- the future looks bright for you, though. I mean, look at Mason Beckman. He made it. He, he's now a part of PA Power Wrestling. So, you know, maybe one day, I don't know, you're, you're, pretty, you're pretty funny. And Mason, I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> I mean, he's funny, but, I mean, is he as funny as you? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think uh, you can compare me and Mason. All right, <laughs> in a good way. In a good, in a good way. You hear that, Eric? I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't know uh, how Mason's gonna gonna react to that. <laughs> I think Cole is our leader, isn't he? All time. Uh, is this your third appearance on the podcast, Cole? It's been a lot. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. You guys just like talking to me. Well, we do. We, we do. Love Cole. Cole. I mean, uh, it's yeah. It's, I like talking to you. Well, we we appreciate it, Cole, and I give you enough enough slack and crap all the time. So uh, I, I I think it's <laughs> yeah. You got to watch your back. I I do. I'm got I got to be careful. You know, <laughs> I I don't know. I got to warn those uh, Zone Four police officers down who work uh, Oakland to to be on the lookout for for Cole Matthews. You may sneak up on you. You may not see him coming, but when he does, you, you're going to feel it. See a five three guy running around. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cole, we, we really are super excited to see you in action in, in Hershey. It's hard to believe, as I said, that, you know, it's your, your final final year. I, I can just remember you and Jarrett Lane coming up through the, the ranks and, you know, some other guys. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, you know, it's almost like the passion of the torch. And you guys have a lot of young mm-hmm. talent. I, I mean, I look at a guy like Cole Toy and, and some other guys that you have coming up through the program. The Reynolds – Raiders. I mean, they don't just, they, they always seem to be competing uh, year after year. So mm-hmm. is that sort of your job to pass that torch on to the next person? Yes. And it's been carried down for how many years now? And if it stops any day, which I don't see it happening, it'll surprise me. But yeah, we have a great tradition. You can even ask Mason because he's been through it. Uh, our tradition is crazy from the elementary program to high school it's it's a beautiful thing actually oh i i, I haven't i've never heard mason talk about reynolds at all ever uh <laughs> ne, not in you know only only a few times only a few times but you're, you're only absolutely, 30 seconds right i mean but you're, you're absolutely right cole i mean the tradition there is just unbelievable and um and mm-hmm. i'm sure if if that fails if that torch fails to be passed down there's going to be uh, about 200 angry state champions state medalists nca all americans yes. coming to the the gym and finding out what the heck's going on so i don't see it stopping anytime soon mm-hmm. hopefully not in our lifetime well cole listen we know you got to get a workout in and we uh, as i said safe travels out to hershey we look forward to seeing you i'm sure we'll catch up to you and uh thanks for joining us on the podcast yes thank you guys i appreciate it once again thanks, cole I, I i can't you know we're gonna have to have you on in college too this can't stop here so so do do some good things <laughs> I would in college love so, that. We can, so we can have you on all right Sounds good, my man. Thank you. All right, Cole. We'll talk to you. Thanks again to Cole Matthews and Eric. It's always a pleasure talking to him and always entertaining. So uh, that that's always looking forward to. Yeah, he's a great kid to have on, uh, and obviously an outstanding wrestler as well. So uh, he he wrestles like he does, like he he acts like he does on the mat. You know, like he's just (laughs) he's just crazy. And I love him. Just letting it fly. Letting it fly. I love it. So uh, thanks again to Cole Matthews. 145 pounds. Uh, as we mentioned, Nathan Halbert of Palisades, he does win the region, and he is, secures his spot uh, atop of the, the seating here and the rankings. On the bottom half, you have Caleb Hetrick from Brookville, who had a big win over Hunter Michaels um, in the regional finals to get to that second seed. He's a returning state medalist. 
Joe Demore from Southside. He comes in 41 and one on the year. He's your Southwest regional champion. How far can Joe go? You know, Joe Demore is a guy that at the beginning of the year, I swear to you, the, the first tournament of the year, like he was unseated. Like for some reason, talk about a guy not getting any prestige points. He had to come from the pigtails to win it. I think I do remember and then, that. That was like yeah, the Charlotte it, it was crazy or something. Yeah, yeah. And then there was another one at South Moreland. He didn't seem to get much of a, a seed either. And I'm thinking, what what is going on? Why is he not getting these? But you know what? Joe Demore doesn't care. He just goes out and wins. No, especially this year. I mean, last year he had a, a shortened season. He was 15 and seven. Was a state qualifier though. Um, this year, 41 and one on the, the season. I like the way he's wrestling. Um, and you look at where he falls in the bracket, sort of uh, uh, an interesting where he sits because it's, I would say the bottom half here uh, is, is pretty loaded because you look at, you got uh Dolfinger from Slippery Rock, who's, who's no, no slouch. Colin Babcock from Benton and then Colin Myers as well. Yeah. A guy who was, uh, you know, ranked as high as number two in the state here. Um, in addition to Caleb Hedrick. So there's, there's not, it's not going to be easy on that bottom half. No, you could easily see uh, DeMore to, to get to the finals, having to go through uh, a Colin Myers, a Caleb Hedrick. I mean, and then, you know, get, get possibly Halbert or somebody in the finals. So yeah, pretty, pretty loaded uh, road there to, to take, to get through the bottom half. And you look at one of the guys here who sort of surprised me. It was Dylan Bennett from Montoursville, who's a freshman. He was on our top incoming freshman report. I don't believe I had him as a regional champion and a state qualifier, <laughs> um, but he is there. He he won the uh, the Northeast Regional. He could have a date with Evan Quartz or K, uh, Gabe Miller from Peckway Valley. Gabe Miller, guy who's been ranked as high as number one in the state this year, and he uh, had a, a setback in the regional tournament, finishing fourth. So he kind of finds himself in a strange position. But the match of the, the for me, the match of the prelim that you're going to watch, Tyler Griffiths and Hunter Michaels. That's a huge Definitely. matchup at 145 Definitely. pounds. Got a state re- returning uh, runner-up in, in Tyler Griffiths, and he's got to face Hunter Michaels in the first round. Yeah, I mean – yeah, good luck. I mean, that, that's, a, that's one. You're going to circle 107. That's the bout number there at 145 pounds. Hunter Michaels, who had that controversial loss to, to Caleb Hedrick in the Northwest Regional Finals here, and he gets a date with Tyler Griffiths, who, as you said, is just a return state runner-up. That's all. Um, <laughs> and, and you look at another one just above that. So maybe I lied. Maybe the, the top half isn't as bad <laughs> as I thought. You have Michael Cusick from uh, South Fayette. Who's, who's been, been wrestling really well really, this season. Really, really well really really well the last few weeks he's going to have logan uh, mclean from ridgeway who was a third place finisher in that loaded weight class behind michaels and hetrick so yeah th- that top half is pretty loaded too i think yeah there i don't i don't know i don't know who i'm picking there <laughs> eric needs some time to let I that do. all sink in and, and figure out and uh can, just, can i get back to you on saturday yeah good 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 luck with that you know that's that's not what you're in the business for eric come on you got to make those <laughs> those hard decisions well it, it doesn't get too hard at 152 pounds because you got justin mccoy who is is seriously one of the most consistent the, one of the most exciting wrestlers to watch that doesn't quite get the i mean he's not he doesn't get the gavin teasdale gavin hoffman talk justin mccoy super super kid but even better wrestler i mean i i love watching him compete he's always going he's got a motor that could go for days uh and mccoy we saw what he did in the regional finals to the number two ranked wrestler in thane lawrence this is this is his for the taking yeah i think so too uh McCoy is just just on a different level, it looks like, than everybody else in this weight class. Because Thane Lawrence is, is pretty darn good, and, and I'm pretty sure that, uh, that Cole Matthews probably knows who he is at this point. But, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say he does. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, as you said, he majored him in the, uh, the Southwest Regional Finals. So McCoy just, you know, just goes out there and attacks, 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 and more often than not converts on those attacks. So I looked at 152 pounds, and there's not a ton – of matches that jump out at me as really exciting first round matches. Did you have any? I mean, I do have a few, but did you have any that that sort of jumped out? The the one that uh, that that I looked at is Alec English and Corey Christie. Uh, Alec English we had at number three, and I believe Christie was number eight. And he's another one of those guys that you look and you say, well, he's thirty five and ten. You know, it's not a, a sparkling record, but I think at least four of those losses are to McCoy. I'm pretty sure and, four of those are to McCoy. 
<laughs> and and it's a borough schedule, so you know that there are going to be a ton of of tough matchups on there. Yeah, I mean, he took two losses at Powerade and two losses at Kingdom Mountain, so there's four, and then four to Justin McCoy, so that's eight. So yeah, <laughs> I'd say he could be. Um, he really, if you look at any wrestling, any other schedule, he could only have two losses. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's one of the matches that I had circled here. Down at the bottom half of the bracket, uh, Peyton Hearn from Conneaut area and Tyler Wildman from Juniata, uh, uh, should be a decent first round match. And, and another regional champion that I don't think got it too easy is, uh, Chase Anklum from, from Penn Argyle. Uh, he's got Andrew Todaro from Mount Union, who's been really solid all season, uh, struggled a bit at the, the Southwest region, only taken fifth, but, uh, he, he's no walk in the park either. No, I, I agree with you, but Anklum, I think is, is still, uh, the clear favorite, it, you know, in that that way, I think he's gonna. I think it's honestly gonna be him and, and Thane Lawrence in the uh, the semifinals. But don't sleep on Cade Lynn either from Southern Columbia, a guy who uh, impressed me in, in this year and especially at the state team tournament, but also escaped the rock. He was the Northeast Regional Champion, only a sophomore, was a qualifier last year. So um, I think it it could come down to Lawrence Lynn and, and Anklum. So, um, but at the end of the day, I don't I don't see anyone getting past McCoy. No, I, I agree with you there. Moving up to 160 pounds. So talk about bracket busters. The 160-pound bracket just got busted, uh, <laughs> especially after we saw returning state champion Creighton Edsel go down. So much like 106 pounds, 160, you got a group of like four to five guys that are uh, seriously in the contention here. And, man, talk about some of these matches here. Quarterfinal matchup, we could have Jared McGill, Versus Curry Edsel. That that to me yeah. is so circle, highlight, uh, asterisk, whatever you want to do, about two hundred and ninety two pounds at one hundred and sixty pounds, that could have been a state finals match. Um in fact it was at one time there were one and two, I believe. Um it, it, it that's an insane matchup if that happens. Yeah, in the quarterfinals, as you said, because, yeah, that probably would have been my pick uh, if they were on opposite sides of the bracket, that you would see that one in the final. And instead, we're going to get it really early. We're going get it, to get it on Friday morning. Yeah, combined record for these two for the season is 82-1. and one. So That's not bad. That's, that's not bad. Uh, McGill has, has not um, lost a match this year. He's won Powerade, won King of the Mountain, sort of just – really doing a, a lot of, you know, McCoy's the one who gets all the talk, but McGill is right there up uh, with him. Crane Edsel, obviously a lot of people weren't having him fall to Mifflin uh, Berg's Tyler Stoltz, and, uh, but that did happen. So now you find himself on the bottom half of the bracket. Another matchup that I'm looking forward to Nate Bradley and blaze Bressler from Northern Lebanon. This is about 126 on the bottom half. This, this could be a good one too. Yeah, that could be a good one. Uh, one that probably not not necessarily such high ranked guys, but guys that could be pretty even. I think are uh, Cole Sasong and uh, and Joe Galvin of Iroquois in the top half there. Uh, you know, one of those that, like I said, probably not the the biggest names, but uh, two guys that should be pretty evenly matched. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Eric. And um, you know, maybe not the names that jump off the page at you necessarily. Um, what about Derek Yingling from West Branch? He comes in thirty five and one. His only loss is to uh, Justin McCoy, or I'm sorry, to Jared McGill, to McGill yeah. right? So, yeah. um, you know, he could have a potential quarterfinal match with the giant killer, Tyler Stoltzfus from Mifflinburg, who just beat the returning state champion. That Talk about that quarterfinal match. Yeah, that could be an awesome one, too. Uh, you know, it just... Some some fantastic matchups there between the the northeast and the southwest guys. Uh, they get both uh, get both of those matchups in the quarters. And we have failed to talk about the top seed here, and that's Caleb Clymer from Northwestern <laughs> Lehigh. I mean, the Clymer yeah, all brothers, he did was I mean, win the yeah. There's only nine Clymer brothers, I believe, out there, <laughs> um, and Caleb is is just one of them. And yeah, he's he's pretty good at wrestling as well. He's a senior out of District 11, 34 and 0 in the season. So he and Jared McGill are both undefeated. And, and man, Caleb Clymer just consistent, consistent, consistent. He was third in the state last year, sixth in the state as a, 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 fr- a sophomore. Man, he—I mean, he's been close. He's been very, very close to getting to that that top level. Um, I don't—I think this year he's got to be one of the favorites here. Yeah, he's the top seed, so definitely, uh, as you said, not an easy road. Uh, you know, probably a, a Yingling or or a Stoltzfus in the in the quarters, and then you know an Edsel or a McGill in the in the 
the the finals. So you know, not an easy path, but he's certainly in the in the mix to to get that state title. And it doesn't get much easier. You move up to 170 pounds. You know, anyone who rags on Dubway, you, you've not you have not looked at this bracket. I'm talking to you, Tristan Warner. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Um, you look at 170 pounds. Edmund Ruth from Susquehanna Township is your top seed. He's a returning state champion. Uh, undefeated last year, undefeated this year. He's just beat Dalton Group for the second week in a row. He is your top seed. But sitting at the bottom, this could be a, another rematch of the finals. Robert Patrick from Ligonier Valley. Man, could we see this happen again in 2018, Eric? We could, but again, as you said, Dalton Group is also down there. So not not such an easy path to the finals for Robert Patrick. I mean, Dalton Group is is no slouch. Uh, it's it's going to take some some effort to to get back to the finals for a third time for Robert Patrick. So you look at the top half. I'm assuming you you feel pretty comfortable about Edmund Ruth coming out on top. I'll there. take my chances with Edmund Ruth. Yeah, I mean, you look at the uh, the four seed Owen uh, Hivener from Lackawanna Trail. He is your your fourth seed there. Um, you got Shane Watkins from Harbor Creek, Derek Brown from Penn Cambria, who I think that's that's a good first round matchup there between Brown and Watkins. Um, yeah, that should be a, a pretty evenly matched one. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Edmund Ruth is, is going to be sitting in the finals, waiting to figure out if it's going to be Patrick or um, Dalton Group. But Gavin Henry from Union City, he's thirty six and three on the year uh, as a junior, and he's uh, he was a re- regional qualifier last year. He's making his first trip to the state tournament, so. Um, he's not going to get an easy first round matchup no, either. No, he's not. I, I like Christian Clutter there uh, of McGuffey uh, to face him in, in that first round, and that's that's a pretty tough matchup. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, Christian Clutter has been wrestling really tough this year. I, I said that on our War Up podcast about how those McGuffey guys have been. So yeah, I mean, we could very well see Clutter coming out of that match against Hunter Kennedy and possibly taking out Gavin Henry. I, I wouldn't put it past that to happen. And uh, Dalton Group, I think, has. You look at the the way the brackets lay out. I think it Dolan Group and Robert Patrick definitely have pretty decent paths to the semifinals, in my opinion. Yeah, that I would I would be surprised if it's that's not the matchup that we see there. If there's anything other than Group Patrick in the semifinals, I think that's an upset. I uh, yeah, I I'd have to agree with you there. And um, you look at Carl Harris as well. He was a returning state medalist. He's the fourth place finisher out of the southeast region he's 30 and four from littlestown um I, I think he could be in that that first round matchup with with Hivner and uh he could end up in the quarterfinals too so yeah it's 70 i mean man this is just a lot of star power and you know this is a, a top heavy bracket that's for sure yeah uh speaking of star power some some pretty big names at 182 as well i've, I've never with, heard uh, of these guys before who, who, are, who are they you got well cody mulligan see he's pretty good okay cody mulligan i see him he's from sagertown looks like uh 36 and three in the season yeah cody mulligan's coming in looking for his second straight state state title say that five times <laughs> um cody mulligan a guy we've seen multiple times this year King of the Mountain, uh, Powerade, and he's had some setbacks against some AAA wrestlers, but he's 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 no doubt one of the best wrestlers in the state. Period. Uh, as I said, a state champion last year, Julian Goring from uh, Fort LaBeouf, a guy who he beat in the regional finals last week. Um, he's he's a returning state fourth place finisher, but another guy by the name of Gage Garcia from Southern Columbia. This sophomore came up from 170 to 182, and um, he's looking to make some noise. Yeah, that uh, that bottom half of the bracket. I mean, I would see that probably as a as a Garcia Goring semifinal. But man, that could be a good one, huh? Well, look at the look at the matchup that Julian Goring has in that first round. Yeah, you're right. With the and I apologize, I've never known how to say his name. Uh, Jeff uh, Magan McGinn uh, from Quaker Valley. Magan, I believe. Magan, I believe. Okay, I've always respected uh, you know what he's done. I've just never known how to pronounce just, it. You but, just uh, don't respect him right. enough to get his name right. Well, I never actually get to see who, Quaker who Valley to talk, uh, Eric. I I I almost <laughs> yeah. I could butcher my own name. I mean, let's be. Let's I, I think be. we should have a segment where I just give you a name and you have to pronounce it just for I, I'm not for good, kicks every week. Again, I'm not. I mean, maybe there's a reason I'm a cop. I I, I don't. <laughs> I cannot pronounce names very well at all. I don't know. Maybe maybe I got some type of something going on up there. Um, but yeah, I, I agree that Julian Goring and, and Jeff Madigan from Quaker Valley is a really good first round matchup. Um, but Gage Garcia, man, he could he really 
challenge these top wrestlers. I mean, I don't think you can sleep on Julian Goring down there. Uh, Luca Kolstock from, from Camp Hill quietly uh, winning the Southeast Regional. Not the deepest weight out of the Southeast Region, but still a guy that, uh, you know, obviously is, is doing good things there. What, what else do you look at 182 pounds when you look at first round, bra- uh, first round matches, Eric? Uh, there are a couple of them at the, the top half there uh, of some pretty decent guys. You've got Andrew Shedleski of Lewisburg and Reese Mason of Hamburg. I think that Shedleski was five and, and Mason was eight last week. So some, some pretty even matchups there. Yeah, and I look at uh, also below that Hunter O'Connor from Jersey Shore, who is uh, second out of the Northeast, and Matt Lewinowski from Mahoney, who was third out of the Southeast. That could be a good first-round matchup. So, yeah, I mean, this is 182. I mean, it, it thinned out a little bit when you had um, Dom Fundy get knocked out uh, from from competition because I thought he was kind of one that, that was going to make some noise. Dalton Group drops down to 170. Uh, but Gage Garcia bumping up from 170 really helps this weight, and um, it, it should be fun to see how it shakes out. Definitely, definitely. 195. You think? Do you think Gavin Hoffman's going to go all six minutes in all of his matches? Combined, no. So you don't. You don't think he's going to. You think he's going to. You think he's going to pin or tech all of his opponents? Is that what you're saying? I, I thought you were asking if he was going to wrestle six minutes combined in the tournament. No, no, no. I meant, I meant, is he going <laughs> to? I'm not sure that he's going to wrestle six minutes combined in the tournament. You don't think he'll wrestle six? Wow. I mean, it only did take him 15 seconds in the regional finals. Well, and, and you know, first of all, Gavin Hoffman is on such a different level. Yeah. But second of all, this this weight class has really thinned out over the past couple of weeks because you had Anthony Walters go from 195 to 220, who was the, the guy that Hoffman beat uh, in, in the finals last year. You have uh, just one that, one that came out today, Hunter Tremaine from North Star, who we had ranked second, uh, unfortunately isn't going to be able to wrestle in Hershey this weekend because of an ankle injury. He uh, was in the, the Southwest Regional Finals. I guess he hurt it in the uh, in the semifinals and medical forfeited in the finals they were hoping he was going to be ready to go this weekend but uh, sounds like possibly some torn ligaments and so he's he's out uh, he's done and uh, just really kind of thinned out this weight class you know we talked earlier Xavier Molnar not here now uh, a, a guy that, that didn't make it back that's a state medalist so the depth here has really thinned out over the past couple of weeks I agree with you, Eric. It has thinned out a little bit, but there's still some high quality wrestlers here. You got Clay Verbanic from Cambridge Springs, who was a fourth place finisher at the state tournament. Brandon Calvin, a guy who beat him in the Northwest Regional Tournament, uh, was a state qualifier last year. As you said, Hunter Tremaine being out does thin it out. Um, it, it's but it's Gavin Hoffman's. I mean, this is this is his weight, and I don't I can't really see anyone challenging him. No, I I, I would be surprised if anybody lasts six minutes with him. You look at some of the first round matchups. Is there anyone that that intrigues you? I have a few highlights here. I have Brady Herr from Newport, who was the Southeast uh, Regional second place finisher, and Lucas Fulmer from Harbor Creek, who was third in that really deep weight class out of the Northwest. I think that's a really good matchup. But the winner there is going to get Gavin Hoffman. So that that that's well, I just good. figured I'm going to pick a guy named Miller. Since there are three of them in this weight class, you know, my if I if I go with a guy named Miller, the odds are that's going to be a decent one. Yeah. So I went with uh, Jared Miller of uh, Reynolds and Chase Dahl of uh, Bermudian Springs. Yeah, you got. I mean, you're not you're not in a bad place picking a Miller. You got Bryson Miller, you got Jared Miller, and you got uh, Riley Miller. Riley Miller now in that uh, the Tremaine is out. Uh, sure. Riley Miller from United got in. A uh, guy from Scram Prep who is a returning state medalist. Ivan Balovich from uh, Scram Prep. He is also in that bottom half there. He could he could cause some issues if he can get into the quarterfinals against uh, Brendan Calvin. I think that could be a good first uh, quarterfinal round matchup for for 195 pounds. But overall, as you said, Eric, just not a whole lot of depth outside of uh, outside of Gavin Hoffman. No, I, I think this one this one is Hoffman and everyone else. You look at 220 pounds, your top seed is a wrestler who has not wrestled at 220 very often, but that's Anthony Walters from Bishop McCourt, who comes in 31-0 and on the season. He is your top seed here. Man, this is, uh, again, sort of a wide-open weight class when you look at it. Uh, Jacob McMaster from Greenville, also undefeated, 38-0 and on the year. I-, I think it comes down to those two, in my opinion. I, I don't know. I wouldn't count out the Luca. I mean, Dom DeLuca from Derry, 
I think has a, a shot against McMaster. Yeah, but don't let's not forget Deluca dropped uh, you know a match to Landon Fisher. I know he avenged it the year or uh, the week after, but um, Jacob McMaster's has been super consistent. You know, he was a state. Yeah, you're right. You're he's, right. he's a state medalist last year. Um, you know, Dom Deluca. Yes, he, he's he's. We know he has the skill set and the tools to do it, but will he do it when when it when push comes to shove? You know, I think that bottom half is is a, is dangerous. You got Hunter Powell's from Muncie, fourteen one on the season. He's your Northeast Regional champion. I think he's going to cause issues. So if Deluca gets to the quarterfinals, which I think he will, I think he's going to have a tough match with Hunter Powell. Um, and then Landon Fisher, the guy who beat him, he's also going to have a tough match with Nazir Pettis from Bishop McDevitt in District Twelve. Um, so McMaster, he's going to have potentially Fisher, Pettis, and then in the quarterfinals, and then face Paust or DeLuca in the semi. So really deep on the bottom half. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, and I don't know. I like, uh, you know, Anthony Walters, two-time runner-up. Uh, I, I think this is his, his obviously his best chance this year to get there. He's the top seed and looks like he should uh, should have a manageable path there in the top half. Yeah, I, I mean, I think winning that Southwest Regional obviously is super critical in this way, especially because you look at, like you said, Dom DeLuca, where he is on the bracket. I think Anthony Waters has a, a good shot, obviously, to make his third straight finals appearance, and I think he will. Austin Taylor, a guy from Bullion Springs who's a senior, um, he, he kind of – Sort of uh, not not surprise a lot of people pinning the Seer Pettis, but super consistent wrestler as well. But I think Walters is just he he's sort of head and uh, you know he's not the tallest two twenty pounder that's for sure. So I don't want to say <laughs> not head and shoulders he's physically not head and shoulders above the rest of the field because he's really not. He's especially he's, when you consider Deluca. Yeah, Deluca who's like six nine and Walters who's five <laughs> nine. So um, yeah, but no, I, I agree with you. I think it's it's going to come down to a, about four or five wrestlers here and uh, should be fun. Yeah, moving up to uh, to heavyweight. What are your thoughts here? Uh, you know, uh, had a, a little bit of an upset last week or uh, two weeks ago at the Southwest. Uh, Bishop McCoy taking out down uh, Josiah Jones, who had been been number one. Uh, what are your thoughts there? I mean, I don't. I wouldn't call that a an upset. You know, no, that, you're that right. Is, you're right. But you know, I mean, rankings wise, it was a little sure, bit. sure rankings wise. But again, whoever does those double rankings, I don't. I don't know what they're doing. But uh, Bishop McCoy, who's all of two hundred and 85 pounds going against Josiah Jones, who came up from 220. I understand he's given up a little bit of weight, but you know that doesn't stop Kyle Snyder from being Adam Kuhn. Uh, when you look at Danny Scheib, he's really the guy I'm looking for to to come out here and prove that he's he's worthy of uh, you know being that top guy. Danny Scheib is a guy who was in the state finals last year as a sophomore. He was a state medalist. Didn't wrestle. Uh, I'm sorry, as a freshman, he was a state medalist. As a sophomore, didn't wrestle due to an injury. And Danny Scheib, um, talk about consistent. I mean, he's, he's, he's pretty solid throughout. But that top half is – it's not easy. I mean, you look at – you got Kobe Whitehill from Brookville, Josiah Jones, who we just talked about, also a two-time state runner-up, Connor Fulmer for Southern Columbia, who impressed me at the state team tournament. So that top half, kind of a loaded bracket. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tough uh... – McCoy really did himself a, a big favor by winning that Southwest Regional and getting in the bottom half. I, I 100% agree. I thought that was – when I looked at the brackets, I was like, man, talk about winning at the right time. McCoy really helped himself out by getting down there, and I think he has a pretty clear shot. I, pre, I think he has a pretty easy shot to get to the semifinals. Um, Stephen McClure from Kerwinsville, I think, is is likely going to be there uh, in the semifinals against him. But, yeah, for, uh, for a heavyweight – yeah, I like this weight. I mean, and you know, I know I'm not the biggest heavyweight fan, but I th- I like the guys that are competing here. Yeah, definitely some some intriguing matchups. Uh, I like that uh, in, in the first round. Colby Whitehill, uh, David Schuford from uh, Valley. I think that's a pretty intriguing one. And Schuford's a guy who's been super tough all year. I mean, he gave Josiah Jones all he could handle. That was, a, a I believe, an overtime match that he lost to Jones. And he's been right up there with him with Bish McCoy as well. So, yeah, I agree. I think Schuford and, and uh, Whitehill, that's going to be a good match. And um, as I said, it should be fun to see how 285 shakes out. Yeah, yeah. And I agree with you. I mean, I... You know, I'm not always the the biggest heavyweight fan. Uh, uh, too many times it seems to be low scoring, but hopefully we get some some pretty good action here because definitely some good athletes uh, in this weight class. Yeah, I liked last year watching Cahill and Shy wrestle in the the finals, and you know, I, I've been more 
more in tune to heavyweights, maybe, you know, and the, but you're right. There's sometimes it just, years are just like, oh my gosh. Like, well, when you, when it ends up being 1 1 and then 2 2, ultimate and, tiebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sort of, it can get old. I, I agree with you. So, well, let's jump back down, Eric, to 106 pounds. Let me hear it. Who do you got in the finals? I got Steen and Redinger. Steen and Redinger, really? Yes. That's who I have. I have that. I have them <laughs> in the finals as well. Um, I have DeMarc and Red- I have, I mean, I'm pretty boring here. I got Steen, Seymour, Redinger, and DeMarc, and I think Redinger and Steen are in the finals. So who do you have winning it? I got Steen. Okay, man, we're, we're the same on that too. I, have, I do have Gary Steen, and Cole Matthews will be happy to hear that um, to talk about, you know, Gary Steen from Reynolds. I, I just like. I would like the way that, that I saw him wrestle at the uh the state team tournament. I think he's battle tested. Not saying Redinger's not and or any of these other guys aren't, but I just I think there's that, that factor you have to, to acknowledge it, that Reynolds factor that um you know, having a guy like Bo Bayless in your, your room every day with you, that that really helps, I think, and I think that's gonna show. It does. It's that uh, old uh, saying of iron sharp sharpens iron. Yeah, I've never and heard that one. You have that Never heard that one before, Eric. That must have been one of those old timers. Said ones. it was an old saying. <laughs> old saying. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I, I like it. I, I'll use it more often. I'm just kidding, Eric. I've I've had that one before. Let's go up to 113 pounds. Who do you got in the finals, Eric? I've got Bo Bayless mm-hmm. and Wyatt Lutz. I knew. I knew you're gonna. I knew you're gonna go with Lutz. So I have Bo Bayless and Josh Boozle. Uh, you're disrespecting your own region there. Uh, I know, I am, no, and I'm going to hear is, about it. Lutz is a guy who's been at this weight before. He was third at this same weight last year. But you know what? Boozles, I mean, he has some some goofy results. I mean, remember he lost to Westmont Hilltop? He was up at like yeah. 132 or 126. I don't know where he was. Yeah, but. He, he bumped up. That was a strange one. And I don't, I don't hold that against him. Uh, you know, certainly I don't see this being a blowout by any means. I, I think Lutz and, and Boozle could go either way. For whatever reason, I'm just leaning toward Lutz at this. So point. I have Bayless and Boozle, and I have Bayless winning. Do you, I'm assuming you have you have Bayless winning. I do. Okay, so you're not too exciting there. We'll 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 go up to 120. Doesn't get much more exciting for me either. Who do you have in the finals here at 120, Eric? I really think that uh, for me, the the semifinal here is a huge one between uh, Jarrett Lane and, and Zach Whitmer. But you know, it's so hard to go against Jarrett Lane. Uh, so I, I got to take him, and I, I got to go with Chase Shields on the bottom too. Like I said, I think the the Simmerman match could be a, a pretty good one in the in the quarterfinals, and uh, and you know the semifinals there should be good as well. But I got to go Lane and Shields. So I'm going to be boring and also pick uh, Lane and Shields in a rematch of last year. Um, the the reason I, I do this is because Chase Shields just always finds a way to get it done. I mean, he just seems he's just. He just really always seems to be in the matches. I mean, they're not all going to be pretty. I I can tell you that right now. He's going to grind out some wins that you're like, man, he probably should have lost that match. But I I think he finds a way to get it done. I like where he's at in the bracket. Um, Other than having Zimmerman, I think he he could have a, a good shot to get to the finals. And uh, but Jared Lane, I think, is just too tough. I think he's just he's just a little bit stronger and a little bit more uh you know has a little bit more credibility at this way we saw what he did to shields last year in the finals so yeah i I think lane will will beat shields in the finals here all right uh moving up to 126 i'm gonna guess that you're gonna take one gavin teasdale to win it here i i am i am gonna go with gavin teasdale in the the finals on the top half but who do you have coming out of the bottom half this is a tough one. Like I said, I mean, I don't even know Varndell Garber who wins that one. Yeah, you know, I agree. Broadway could come out of there, uh, but I, it's too hard to pick against Joshua Jones. Yeah, so I have Jones in the finals just simply on so the So you've fact- gone to chalk every weight so far. You've gone one versus two and one winning. Uh, okay. Well, you got to step out on a limb here somewhere, Jeff. Don't don't you worry. I, I got I got my upset <laughs> special. Uh, coming okay. up here soon. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I'm p- picking Jones strictly on the fact that I can't figure out who's going to win Garber and Varndell if, if Garber <laughs> gets there. Um, at Varndell, it, you know, he having beaten Kenny Kaiser last week uh, in the regional finals, I think was a huge, huge step for him. Um, so he's obviously peaking at the right time. But Josh Jones, I mean, 
you can't really go against a guy who's who's been as consistent and, and just hard nosed as he is. He just he's he's rough and he's he's tough on the mat. So I, I like the way he wrestles. But Gavin Teasdale, I, I do have him winning his fourth title. Okay, not a surprise there. Moving up to one thirty two. I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here. here. I'm going to. I'm just going to. Going to stop you right there. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and pick Joe Clock to win the title. Just saying. Okay. So, eat that for not picking uh, the top one and two seeds here. All right. All right. Who do you have him in the finals against? Colrone. So third third week in a row or third third tournament in a row. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. I mean, I just just in watching these guys wrestle, I, I think that. Uh, I think both both of them are, are just sort of. I think that them battling each other is really making them both better. I think it's kind of fueling the fire behind them and saying, you know, hey, I, I got to get there. Bodie Tolbert, while I like the way he's wrestling and I like the way uh, he wrestled in the regional tournament, I, I just I like Joe Clock a little bit more. The way he's a little bit more aggressive and um, and Sam Salad as well. He's a, he's a guy who I think is going to battle those. So Joe Clock's going to come into the finals with a black eye and a bloody nose, I'm sure. <laughs> but I think that's I, I think he's up for the task. I think he's hungry. I think he really wants it. And he's he's another guy who's just mean on the mat. Uh, so that's who I'm going with. Eric, what about you? Honestly, I think I'm. I think I agree with you. Wow. I mean, go on a limb for once. Live a little bit. Well. I mean, this is 132, so I have no idea. You know, it, it could very well be like Donovan Chambers and, you know. Well, that's uh, true. Or, yeah. <laughs> just that, the, the way that this weight class has gone for me all year, I have no idea. No, it's actually going to be Schultice. That... Trent Schultice is going to be in the fire <laughs> f- uh, finals against AJ Corrado. So, <laughs> I, I mean, the way that 132 is going this year, actually, John Rocco Cazales is going to get an at large base, yes. come in and make the finals. <laughs> That's what's going to It's going to be like the WWE where they're just going to be like, oh, my God, that's when. John Rocco Cazales' music. <laughs> it's not what tag team just, match. just going to come out for the finals. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting. Let's go up to 138 pounds, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb here and say Cole Matthews is going to win a state title. That's crazy for me to say. I don't know. The guy wasn't seated number one for, you know, at least three of these versions. It's true. For, I mean, again, 83, 87%. These are the correct brackets. So <laughs> this this actually, this preview could be completely garbage because <laughs> when the new brackets come out and we're talking about this, they're all going to be different. So Guys are at different weights. Uh, so, yeah. like, I'm really hoping our odds are, are correct. Caleb Dowling, though, I think is going to be in the finals against him. Um I think he has a really tough path, though. You look at Jones, Milbrand, um, McLean. I, I think he's going to have a hard path to get to the finals, but I, I do think it's Cole Matthews' year. He's been in so many tough brackets throughout his career. I think he's kind of signed a, a you know a breath of fresh air now because he's looking like, all right, I, I actually am the favorite here. So um, what do you think, Eric? Uh, I hate to do it, but, yeah, i got to agree with you. Matthews over Dowling. You're going to go with Dowling in the finals as well, though? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. Um, going up to 145 pounds, a uh, little bit more wide open. You got Nathan Halbert as a top seed, Colin Myers and Caleb Hetrick on the bottom half, Joey Demore. Who do you, who do you got here, Eric? This is a little bit – this is where you could see some, some – uh, This is – I don't know what to do here. I, I really like Demore. Uh, you know, I, I, I honestly – I think I'd probably go Demore Hetrick if I could – but you know that's going to be a semifinal, so I'm going to go Demore, and I guess Halbert. Wow. Okay, that's that's an interesting one. I'm I'm going to go with Colin Myers against Nathan Halbert in the finals. Wow. And I'm going to pick okay. Colin Myers to win it. Uh, I'm I'm going to go with Demore. You know, like I said, the guy's been disrespected all year. You know, doesn't even get seeded for the first tournament. Right. So, you know, now he's the third seed in the state. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't know how to act there, but uh, but I like him. Uh, he's going to be my pick. Okay. I'm going with Colin Myers to win it just – and even though he lost to Halbert in the regional finals, I think um, I think he's a little banged up, so I think he needs to get healthy. Um, I think having a few days off is going to help him. But I also look at the fact that he's been there before. He's been in the state finals. He's – he just has that confidence about him. I think when he's wrestling, and um, I, yeah, I think yeah, I think he gets it done. So, but that's not a solid pick. I mean, that's a 
<laughs> as you said, that that's like a 32 pick where I think there's probably four or five guys here that could win this weight. All right, up at 152, I don't think there are four or five guys here that can win it. I think uh, Justin McCoy is, is the favorite uh, all day long. Uh, I've got him uh, over Thane Lawrence again in the final. All right. Well, I have him winning, but I have it against Chase Anklem from Penn Argyle. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just really? I, not feeling the Thane. That, that's not the case. I just think I, I, <laughs> I mean, I just I don't know. I don't know. I, I still think Thane's a little bit undersized for 52. I think he's kind of in that weird stage between 45 and 52. Um, and uh, I think it may catch up with him in the state tournament. I don't know. I, I, I just I, I was I wasn't I, at the escape the rock. He looked like he was struggling a little bit. Um, I know he's banged up. So it, it's really hard to to. You know, I don't know. I just, I just think Chase Anklem is is going to figure out a way to get to the finals. But I, I okay. do think McCoy is going to win it. All right. What about one hundred and sixty? All right. So one hundred and sixty, which is literally the one of the most insane brackets of of the tournament. I'm going to go with Caleb Clymer in the finals against Jared McGill. Who do you got in the finals? I got the same. Who do you got winning? I got to go with my boy McGill. Oh boy. Gotta agree undefeated with you. against undefeated. I, I got to go with you here as well. I think McGill, um, he's hungry. I mean, most of his most of his season's been at one seventy. Yeah, that's so, and that's what you know, I like about it is he's been at one seventy and he's looked really <laughs> sharp in those matches. Uh, we saw him at Powerade and King of the Mountain just really dominate uh, his opponents, and um, you know that's saying a lot for a guy who comes in with a Chestnut Ridge record. You know, with a, and don't this, forget he was a, he was a place winner at one seventy last year. Which I think was almost because he could help the team more at 170. Yeah. Because they had a, a state qualifier at 160 as well. I, so I he, do think he kind of. Go ahead. I do think that Caleb Clymer is one of the. I mean, I think his top half is, is very favorable to him. Yes, I agree um, with you. You know, Yingling I, I mean, is uh, assuming Stoltzfus, who knows, maybe he, he comes out like he did last weekend sure. and, you know, makes a final here as well. Right, right. So I think I think really you look at that quarterfinals match between Edsel and McGill that that very well could be a finals match a semifinals match so but yeah I, I agree I think um, I have to go with McGill as well so uh, we're we're the same on a lot of these Let, let's go up to 170 pounds Edmund Ruth and Robbie Robert Patrick who do you uh, are you, are you picking those two in the finals. <sighs> You know, I'm really struggling with this Dalton Group Robert Patrick pick. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Uh, I, I'm I'm gonna go Patrick, but I don't see that being an easy match by any means. I think uh, I think that's a, a really tough one. And you know, it, Ruth uh, Patrick they they wrestled twice last year, both really close matches. Ruth finding a way to get it done, and until I see otherwise, I think you got to go with that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. So. I'm going to go with Edmund Ruth in the finals, and I am going to go with Robert Patrick to v- defeat uh, Dalton Group in a very close match. I think this is a, a really, just a, a really tactical match here between these two. A really, um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a dog it's going to be a dog fight. I think between those two, um, but I think Edmund Ruth is just he's figured out a way to to really excel at such a high level. Um, so yeah, I, I think Edmund Ruth is is poised to get his second straight state title. Let's see uh, at 182 pounds. Can Cody Mulligan do the same? What, who do you got here at 182? Yeah, I like Mulligan here. I think it's a tough bracket, uh, but I think he's on the, the much uh, better side of it. You know, as you said, you've got Gage Garcia and Julian Goring, uh, probably my picks for the semis on the bottom half. Uh, who do you have? Who do you have? Uh, I, I'm going to go with Garcia. I mean, Goring, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's not a smart pick because. Uh, uh, Garcia is coming up from 170, but uh, I just, you know, I, I love my Southern Columbia guys uh, to, to get the job done in, in this point. So I'm going to go uh, against you. I'm going to have Cody Mulligan and Julian Goring in the finals. Okay. Um, and I think the weight difference may be a little bit of an issue for, for Garcia. Uh, Goring's a guy who, I, I don't know, I just, I like the way he wrestles. I, I think it depends on what Julian Goring shows up too. Um because he's more than capable. If he's wrestling like to his full potential, he's he's going to be in the finals. But if he gets, if he lets things get in between his ears a little bit too much, I think he's going to have some trouble. So um, the safe bet I think is Gage Garcia, but I'm going to go with Julian Goring. 
Well, don't forget, I was on the Garcia bandwagon yesterday too because uh, fact uh, I got to to talk to uh, his his younger brother Gavin, who made some history, winning his seventh uh, PJW title uh, yesterday. Yeah, that's a lot. So uh, yeah, He's that, that's good. not bad. Yeah. <laughs> so let's so, more to come from Southern Columbia in the future. Let's go up to 195 pounds. Um, uh, this is uh, a weight that's really difficult to pick, but I'm going to have to Especially go Especially if your with, bracket's not right. Yeah, exactly. Especially with those brackets <laughs> incorrect. I'm, I'm going to go with Gavin Hoffman in the finals against Brendan Calvin from Greenville with Gavin Hoffman winning his third state title. Who do you got? Yeah, I got the same thing. Same uh, same thing? Same finals too? I Yeah, I think Hoffman, like I said, I'd, I'd be surprised if, if he's challenged at all okay. in this tournament. I think it's, it's his to win. And I think Calvin is, is probably the best uh, out of that bottom Best of the rest? Well. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's it's Hoffman on one level and then a, a drop to Calvin and then probably a couple others right around that level. All right. Let's go up to 220 pounds. Who you got in the finals here, Eric? Uh, I'm going Walters DeLuca. Okay. Yeah. That's a fair, that's a fair, fair assessment here. I'm going to go Walters and McMaster Okay, with Walters winning. I think Walters gets it over the hump. I think he gets uh, gets the job done. Uh, the only reason I'm not picking DeLuca is just because of the struggles that we saw him with uh, when, when guys frustrate him. He's, you know, uh, kind of has some issues. And Big Master is a guy who, who's, I, I don't know, he's just consistent. He's, I like the way he wrestles. DeLuca, I love the way he wrestles when he battles hard. And I just think he's got a really tough side of the bracket. I think that Hunter Pouse match in the quarterfinals, which I think is going to happen, is going to take a lot out of him. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, but again, I think Walters finds a way to win. Okay. Can, uh, heavyweight, can Bishop, can Bishop McCourt yeah. make it two in a row here up at heavyweight? Who do you got? Who do you got in the finals? I, I'm such a homer. Who are you picking? I'm going Jones. Jones against who? McCoy again. Okay. And with Jones winning. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm picking Danny Scheib. I'm picking Danny Scheib to beat. That, that's probably the smart money. I'm picking Danny Scheib to beat Bishop McCoy. Uh, I just think Danny Scheib's more accustomed to a heavyweight uh, match. I think he's we've we've <laughs> yeah, but Josiah Jones has wrestled a heavyweight match his entire career, no matter what weight he was at. That's a fact. It, but <laughs> it was that one one two two going to I, ultimate tiebreaker. I understand. Tie I understand. Danny Scheib, though, I just think I don't know. Got a feeling. I got a feeling. So I think Danny Scheib is going to be in the finals against Mitch McCoy with Danny Scheib winning. So there it is. Take it for what you want. Um, Laugh it, at us next week whenever. Yes, please yell at us. Please and, DM me and say how terrible I am and how wrong I am. And listen, that's why they wrestle the matches. Come on. This is just for fun. And you're obviously listening because you're entertained. So and, and hopefully you enjoyed it and, you know, yelled at the uh, the podcast a little bit whenever you disagreed with us. Called us names. You name it. Um, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I definitely, I'm looking forward to it, Eric. And and stick around because we are going to also be giving you a AAA state tournament preview uh, as well. So if you haven't already listened to that, make sure you do. Also listen in to our War Up podcast where Greg Warnock and I dissect the WPIL brackets and talk about some things that happened there. Um, thanks again to Cole Matthews for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure to talk to, to Cole. Look forward to seeing him in Hershey and talking to him for the the rest of uh, you know his career. And you better believe PA Power Wrestling is going to have all the, the updated correct brackets, uh, official version 4.0 brackets whenever they do come out. And uh, looking forward to seeing some really good wrestling in Hershey in the next few days. Follow us on Twitter at PA Power Wrestle for all uh, updates. We'll be updating throughout the, the tournament. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it, Eric. Absolutely. We're going to have some uh, some new merchandise uh, in yeah, Hershey as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, we got some we got some new sweatshirts coming your way. Uh, just got them in, so they're going to be going up for sale on the site here um, very shortly. And uh, if you're lucky, you place an order, and you're going to be at the state tournament. You don't have to have it delivered. I'm going to bring it right to you. So um, definitely check out the the PA Power Wrestling store. If you look on the the website, you'll see gear. Click on that, and you can find their new sweatshirts. Mason Beckman was rocking them this weekend. He liked it. So, and he's a he's sort of a connoisseur of of style and, and clothing. So, got, they got to be good. Absolutely. All right. Well, 
next time we talk to you, we're going to know who are the state champions in the 2018. So uh, looking forward to seeing how that pans out, Eric. Until next time. 